Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. As we look down into the mediastinal area now, we see the remaining branch of the internal thoracic artery. Adjacent to it is a phrenic nerve running alongside of the pericardial sac to eventually terminate below in the diaphragm. This nerve, as you recall, arises from cervical segments three, four, and five, and passes downward then to the respiratory diaphragm, which is the lower limit of the thoracic cavity. Above, we see the arch of the aorta with its branches, the brachiocephalic artery, the left common carotid artery, and deep within here, the left subclavian artery. We have talked already about the superior mediastinum, that area which is bounded above by the first rib and below by the line, a horizontal imaginary line that extends from the second rib level posteriorly into the fourth thoracic vertebrae. Beneath that is the inferior mediastinum, extending as far downward as the diaphragm. The inferior mediastinum can be divisible into three portions. An anterior portion directly behind the lower portion of the body of the sternum and it overlies the pericardial sac in this region. It is only filled with some fat, and in this area there may be a few ligaments that attach to the back of the sternum, the sternopericardial ligaments, and a few lymph nodes. These have already been removed. The middle mediastinum is the heart, and the sac around the heart called the pericardium. And then posterior to it, just in front of the vertebral column, is the posterior mediastinal area with its contents that must be viewed only after the pericardium and heart has been removed. The pericardium is a sac-like structure that completely surrounds the heart. On the outside, we see the fibrous portion of this sac, for the serous portion is found within. In order to visualize the serous pericardium as well as the heart, the pericardial sac then should be opened and reflected so that we can look down onto the heart wall itself. Sometimes you will have adhesions between the heart wall and the pericardial sac, as we see here. These should be reflected in order to get a complete exposure of the anterior heart wall. Likewise, reflect the pericardium on the right side of the heart. And when we turn now the inside of the pericardial sac towards the camera, we can see the very glistening serous layer of the pericardial sac. The heart itself is usually covered by 
a, quite a bit of fat. This fat needs to be dissected in order to see the artery and veins that course along the surface of the heart. This pericardial sac is atypical in that it is tightly adherent to the heart surface. Usually, the pericardial sac is completely separate, except where the major arteries and veins enter and leave the heart. So continue this dissection then to remove the pericardium so that we can visualize as much of the heart as possible. Continuing then, we see that the heart is free within the pericardial sac, lying directly down onto the respiratory diaphragm below. The apex of the heart points laterally and to the left. The base of the heart is up by the aortic arch. Coming into the heart laterally, above is the superior vena cava, leaving the heart the aorta. In addition to these structures, you should look closely at the superior vena cava as it enters, and also down below on the right side, when you completely free up the heart, if there are any other fibrous attachments, will be seen the inferior vena cava. There is no length to this inferior vena cava into the pericardial sac because as soon as it enters the pericardial sac, it immediately enters the heart area itself. However, we saw above that the superior vena cava does have some length to it. The ventricles form the greater portion of the heart, and they are covered with fat in this area. The atria are smaller and are found above on both the right and here on the left sides. There is a small wing-like projection of the right and the left atria, and these are the auricles. And here we can see the small tongue-like extension called the right auricle. In addition to this, after the fat is removed and dissected away from the heart, we can see uh, the veins lying in the anterior interventricular sulcus, a groove on the surface of the heart running approximately in this location in which not only uh, the vein on the anterior surface of the heart, but the anterior interventricular artery will pass. Notice that the heart, as we see it here, has a glistening surface to it, and this is because of the visceral layer of the serous portion of the pericardium that reflects from the sac onto the heart, and it, along with the fat, forms the epicardial layer that completely covers the heart itself. In addition to this now, you should begin your dissection by removing the fat from the anterior surface of the heart in a longitudinal direction because that is the direction that the arteries and veins will take. And already here in the fat we can see the inner ventricular artery as it's passing downward towards the apex of the heart. Continue this dissection in order to clean up all of the fatty material and using the textbook and the atlas uh, where there are some excellent illustrations of the venous supply, dissect all of the veins 
that you can in the anterior view. We then make sure that you begin a study of the radiographic anatomy of the thoracic region. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu/license.